Hi, I'm Scott. This is my rain gutter green system. It's a derivative of Flurry Hall's rain gutter grow system. It has a rain gutter under it that provides water to all these different planting planters, trays, constantly with a float on it that automatically regulates the water level. So it's automatically watered. By capillary action. Watering is really no effort on this. There's no bugs, really, compared to, you know, regular garden, it has a lot of earwigs and roly-polies. Uh, the maintenance is really low. This is cheap and easy to build. Now, I come up with some things that are, they work pretty well, but they're hard to build, or they're expensive. This is cheap and easy, and it works really well. So I'm pretty excited about this. Um, it has, for the first time ever, given us year-round greens, which the way I was doing it before, there's always some problem. Uh, you know, there'd be gaps, it'd be too hot, it'd be too cold, too many weeds. Too many bugs. We have had great salads every week of the year. Uh, in the winter, with this hoop house that I made, we put this plastic over it, it doesn't get too cold here, keeps it warm enough. Uh, in a colder climate, you could put this in a better greenhouse that's a little more insulated. Uh, in the summer, take the plastic off, put a shade cloth over it, spring and fall, just leave it open to the outside. And what I do is I cycle these trays uh, as a bed gets mature and picked and it's kind of done, take it out, plant another crop in it. A week or two later, another bed is mature and it's done. So there's a, a constant progression of seeds that are just germinating, plants that are smaller, you can pick smaller tender greens, larger plants, uh, and you can get a good salad out of it all the time. We've got a lot of different crops. We've got some mustard greens, we've got some spinach, got some lettuces, arugula, kale. Cilantro does exceptionally well right through the heat of summer. I think it has something to do with the roots being constantly wet, uh, which keeps them cooler. The maintenance on this is really low. In the winter, if it gets too cold, I have to turn the water system off. And so then I, I, get a, I have to water the tray, just fill the tray directly with a hose or a watering can. Uh, so that's one thing that changes a little bit. The one thing you do have to do is fertilize this, and I'm trying different things. I've used a miracle Grow. This is meant to be dissolved in water. I just get a little scoop, a couple of scoops of it, and drop it in the rain gutter. I'm trying Master Blend. We'll see how this works. It could take a while to sort this out. Plenty of experimentation there. Probably the biggest expense on this is the potting soil. And the system is pretty particular about the potting soil that it will work well. Uh, the the uh, miracle Grow potting mix a two cubic foot bag fills about three of these trays. So there's 15 trays. Time, divide that by three, so you get, you know, five bags. And I'm going on past a year with the soil. I, you know, I just keep planting it. I don't change it out. We'll see how long that works. Uh, so occasionally changing the soil, adding in fertilizer. Those are the major labor inputs um, in costs and materials. We'll see how these cedar trays last. My guess is going to be between five and ten years uh, before they rot out and have to be replaced. So I got, I'm putting together a video here. I have all the process for building this. Take a look at it, and maybe this is something that would work well for you. It's, it's certainly one of the easier projects that I've put together. Here's my wife's rain gutter grow system. This is the standard system outside. It's in winter mode right now. Things are kind of cold. In the summer, we've got cherry tomatoes, flowers, basil, uh, a lot of different things. Set down a little lower to accommodate the taller tomatoes. You can see it's got individual pots here. The rails on the gutter system underneath have to be put closer together to support the pots. I got a piece of aluminum flashing that I stretch across it and I drilled holes for the net cup that goes underneath it. 
to keep the mosquitoes and bugs out of it. Uh, so that's something you have to do with, with these big openings between the pots. This works very well too. Here's most of the materials and tools you're going to need to build a rain gutter grow system. Start out with two two by six by twelve foot Douglas fir lumber, any straight lumber. That kind of precludes pressure treated lumber, which is notoriously crooked. These have to have a straight edge. Both of them have to have a straight edge. Getting a piece of lumber with a straight edge is probably going to be the hardest part of this whole project. Okay, there's a 10 foot gutter. We're going to cut those 2 by 6 by 12 foot pieces down to 10 foot 8 inches long. That's to give a little extra support on the ends of the gutters for large buckets, etc., that might hang over the end of the gutter instead of just 10 foot even. Also, I generally use a 2 by 8 instead of two 2 by 6s and I ripped the 2 by 8 in half to about three and a half inches wide and that's because I can get a straighter 2 by 8 than a 2 by 6 better better uh, lumber um, 2 by 6 can be cut out of smaller newer growth trees and that's also why you don't want to use a 2 by 4 they're cut out of really small new growth trees and it's just going to be really hard to find a 2 by 4 12 foot long or 10 which you're going to cut it down to that's straight and is going to stay straight it's going to be virtually impossible to do that with pressure treated you're going to need two end caps some 3 inch deck screws I'm going to just use some old uh, recycled deck screws this is not a real critical application they could be drywall screws just 3 inch screws that you can install some zip ties you're going to need an aquarium float to regulate the water level. And I'll put that in the description. Get those on eBay for two or three bucks a piece. You're going to need some PVC glue. You're going to need an impact driver or a power drill. And it will go a lot easier if you have some quick connect drill bits. You're just drilling wood, they can be cheap. You're going to need some kind of a saw that you can cross cut 2x6 lumber with. Circular saws work fine. You could use a little circular saw. If you're not comfortable with circular saws, use a jigsaw. There's just not, there's not that much cutting. Use whatever you feel safest with, what you have. You're going to need safety glasses when you use a nail gun. You're going to need a good mask when you're cutting pressure treated wood and cedar. You absolutely do not want to breathe in pressure treated dust and cedar dust can be very problematic for some people. This whole COVID thing, what people are calling masks, all tradesmen know what a joke that is. Uh, N95 is what it takes to get particles out. So don't think that those other masks are going to protect you. They might protect other people from your sneezing or coughing, whatever, but they're not going to protect you from dust or fumes or anything. So for your protection when doing this project, you know, get a good mask in 95. They're cheap. Here's three more tools you're going to need to get this project done. This is a reaming bit. I'm going to use that to ream a hole in a piece of aluminum to put the aquarium float in. Here's a triangle file. A sharp nail file would work just as well. And of course, here's a little angle grinder. Also here you can see some 2x4 lumber. One of these pieces is pressure treated that I had laying around. It really doesn't need to be pressure treated. You're going to need, uh, let's, let's just start out saying about 10 or 12 feet of 2 by 4 lumber. Anything will do. That's why I've just got some old scrap here. Tape measure, square. Now let's get into lumber. Uh, the big box stores really don't seem to mind if you go digging through their lumber piles. And I'm amazed how confusing lumber selection seems to be to some people. So first of all, I mean, it, it's the piece of lumber should be straight, siding down the end. You know, it should have a straight edge at the store. If it's already crooked, it's not going to get better. But plenty of the pieces that are straight, when they dry out, because they're really pretty wet, the way they're shipped, will become crooked. 
So you need to look at other qualities of the wood besides its initial straightness to figure out what the future holds for that piece of lumber. Now obviously big knots are a problem. So you can look for a piece of lumber without too many knots. Tight knots as they say. Not a big knot on the edge that's going to weaken it. And you're going to look where it, how it's cut out of the tree. Here I've got a, a cross-cut view of what a tree might look like and where the piece of lumber might come out of. Now the red lines show pieces of lumber cut out of the dead center of the tree, the heart. Hearts warp horribly. You don't want to have anything to do with a heart. You don't want anything, you know, like on the left, you don't want a piece of lumber that's right on the heart. You don't want a piece that's really close to the heart, either on the edge or the face of the board they're almost certainly going to warp. You want a piece, like in the black here, basically anywhere but the heart without a lot of knots in it. And so, you know, you get your lumber, bring it home, let it dry out. For at least a month? You can't predict with absolute certainty what a piece of lumber is going to do until you actually let it dry. So let it dry out. And if you pick from these good pieces of if you pick pieces cut from the, a good part of the tree, you should have a success rate over 90%. Uh, but still, let it dry out. Why put the labor into it, have it dry out, and find out later that that piece of wood just isn't going to work. So to me, this is the hardest part of the entire project. It's just getting a couple pieces of wood that are straight and are going to stay straight. So, like I said, that's why I'm going with the two by sixes, which I think is going to work better for most people. Two by six comes out of a little better part of the tree, a little older growth than what you might get a two by four out of, and two by eight will come out of something better yet. I don't think most people are going to want to rip that two by eight with a table saw, so that's, that's another reason I'm going with the two by sixes here. First thing I'm going to do is cut these pieces of two by six by 12 foot long into 10 foot eight inch pieces, 128 inches. That's gonna give me two 16 inch pieces left over. I'm gonna use those 16 inch pieces for cross members across the bottom. I like the 16 inch number because it's the same width as a concrete block. Now that I think about it, probably your best bet is to get three two by six by 12 foot and use the best two for the rails. You're gonna need five 16 inch pieces of cross supports. Now where you place the 2x6s on those cross supports is going to depend on what kind of planter you're going to support on it. You might have those 2x6s only you know, 8 inches apart if you're going to put a paint bucket kind of a uh, planter on it. You're thinking about the size of the base of your planter. For a greens garden that's going to have a 40 inch planter on it, I'm going to go the maximum distance apart, 16 inches. The 16 inch dimension is the same as the width of a concrete block. So I cut my two by sixes to the 128 inch length. Here's the two by fours, five of them, 16 inches long. The offcuts of the two by sixes split, which is another reason it's not a bad idea to get 12 footers. You can cut the worst end off. These are kind of some old recycled piece of wood, so I just I cut the split ends off. Here's the gutter with the ends glued on. Now what I need to do is measure between this inner lip, the inside of the lip of that cap, from there to the other one. And on this one it measures 118 inches. What I'm gonna to have to do when I place the cross pieces on the two by sixes is make sure that the two outer ones are no more than 118 inches apart. I'm going to center that on those because they're 128 inches long. So, you know, five, I'm going to put, put, let's say, five or six inches in from the end. So I'm going to put the two cross pieces on the ends. Then I'll put one dead center. And then I'll just split the difference and add number four and five. There's my layout marks, six inches in from the end. Here's a cross piece that I've pre-drilled 
so the screw can go through there and cinch it up tight. I got a bit that was big enough to clear the screw shank, a little bigger than the screw shank. This old dry Douglas fir was a little too hard to put a screw into without pre-drilling. So I placed the cross piece on top. I got a drill. It's a little smaller diameter than the shank of the screw so that the threads will still have some bite. I pre-drilled with the 2x4 in place. Then I took the 2x4 off and deepened the holes enough for the screw to go all the way in. Here's the two side rails screwed together with the five bottom pieces. There's the gutter with the end caps on it. I cut 10 of these 2x4s 12 and a half inches long. Between the two rails is 13 inches, so just some easy clearance there. Those are going to be spacers to hold the gutter up about level with the top of the rails. When you're putting that together, put a square across the end. It doesn't have to be exactly square, but it's a little better if it's close, it just will look better. Here's a piece of gutter that I cut. These are just spacers. You're going to need some kind of spacer to bring up the gutter level with the two rails, even with the, the two two by fours under it. And they need to be water, the spacers need to be waterproof. So it could be about anything. It, it could be some piece of tar paper, some pieces of asphalt roofing, uh, scrap linoleum, just something waterproof. It lacked about 3 16ths of an inch of being up where it needed to be. So for me, it looked like two of these were gonna be about right on the thickness of two of them. It's gonna take two eight inch zip ties to get all the way around this. And I put them on the end here because this end cap is holding the gutter in its appropriate width. I'll slide these along, I put four of them on. That's one every two feet. And I've got one turn around, see the ends, that will be down, but leave a little bit on the ends in case you need to tighten them up. I put the square across so you could see how the gutter has to end up being spaced to where it's, it's just below the top of the rails. So there's two two by four spacers lifted up. And then I've got this little piece of gutter that I cut there. They go into the bottom of it. Okay, so here's the soda can. I'm gonna make the support for the aquarium float. Just fold it over itself, starting out about an inch and a half wide. Cut the soda cannon with some sharp kitchen scissors. We're going to bore a hole through the aluminum. It's a slightly larger diameter than this threaded area here. I'm going to support it with the wood so that the aluminum doesn't just collapse. On the bottom of the float, on that, that little s square protrusion, the black area has to be filed down. It's a lot easier to do it now than after it's installed. And it's just to get the water to drip inside the gutter and not drip outside the gutter. Okay, here's that where I filed down. You can see it in blue a little better now to a point. Now I'm going to file a hole with the triangular file at the top here with this nib. We're going to. I ripped a piece of two by four, tall enough to come up just below the height of the two rails. And I screwed it to this spacer two by four with three inch X screws from underneath. Then I took the soda can piece, installed the float on it. You can back these screws out and mount it anywhere along this two by four here. Mount it a little higher, a little lower. So it's pretty adjustable. Also, that little screw right in the middle of that circle can be loosened and the angle of the float 
can be adjusted. Note on the back that I mounted it up high enough to rotate that 90 degree elbow screwing it in and have it clear the 2x4. It's just more convenient for setup and takedown. Here's a couple more details. I unthreaded the 90 degree elbow, got an angle grinder, and ground a notch for the tubing to come up and bypass that 2x4. Here's a coil of standard quarter inch landscaping tubing. You can get it just about anywhere that sells this stuff, any big box. That's what we're going to use to plumb this in with. Okay, right here, here's the other end of that tubing. On the right is a tubing splice. So you can cut the tubing in half and slide it on each end and splice it back together. What I did is I took the tubing splicer and I cut it in half with a sharp knife. Now, how this is going to be installed, here's this plastic piece off of the aquarium float. You slide that over the quarter inch tubing, then you take that piece you cut and you jam it in there. I've, I've only got it partially in because um, I'm not ready to install. When you're ready to install, get a, a teacup full of hot water, put the tubing in it, soften it, and jam that half of that splicer in there. And what that does, it expands the tubing to where this plastic nut here has something to push against and fasten the tubing into the aquarium float with a tight water seal. Here's everything in place. On the right is a 5 8 inch pan head screw I used to screw the aluminum in. It's just an extra one. You can see what kind of screw it is. You can see where the black tubing angles down below. The float is adjustable. So when we get it in place, we'll see where it comes out to. We have to do some adjusting. Here's the whole float assembly loose, just so you can get a look at it. That bottom 2x4 spacer piece just floats. It's not attached to anything. You can slide it left and right to adjust where the float is relative to the rain gutter. Well, this is meant to go somewhere in the middle of the rain gutter. You could make it a little differently and put it out towards the end of the rain gutter if you wanted to. I took out an old rain gutter green system. So what I'm showing you here is the new and improved. So I'm starting with a little bit of a head start here. The blocks, I had to move the two end blocks a little bit. The spacing was a little different. You level the blocks across that way with a level. And you might need to tamp the dirt with a sledgehammer. You can see I got the concrete blocks. These are eight by eight by 16s. I've got them turned on edge so that the broad face is on the ground to give it better support. So I kind of got them in, in general position now. And what I'll do is I'll lay that wood frame of the rain gutter system across it and put a little bit of water in it and use the water as a level to see if I need to raise or lower one of the end blocks and adjust it. So I put some water in this rain gutter and of course I had, had a head start since this is on top of an old system but I did have to adjust the end blocks a little bit and you can't see it here I'm sure there's just like a quarter of an inch of water on the ends and in the middle and really I mean try to get it accurate but within an eighth of an inch is going to be enough so you could have it an eighth of an inch deep in one end and a quarter of an inch deep in the other end. There's nothing more accurate than using water for a level. Now I'm going to take this off and add the blocks on. I added some pieces of sheet metal that lap over the edge of the block. That's kind of a bug guard. Uh, it seems to have worked pretty well in the past. You know, the bug would have to be hanging upside down on the bottom of that metal to get around it. You've got to judge for yourself what kind of soil you're working on. I mean, if you're on something sand or loam, you're going to have to do a little more than just put a block on it because it'll sink. So that's, that's kind of a matter of judgment. You may have to pour a little concrete. You may have to get a bigger, like a couple of blocks under it 
two concrete blocks to broaden the area of support. So you just have to do what works. Put the rain gutter system together here. I've got the two by four spacers underneath the gutter. I've got those little plastic shims under the gutter. Here's how the tray will sit across it. It's 40 inches wide. Now, if you're going to use this rain gutter system for something else, not for growing greens, and you're going to put something narrower, like a five gallon bucket sitting on top, you're going to have to move these two outer rails closer together. I like the extra growing area. Also, you can see the ends extend past here. I could put an extra wide tray on the end, say 12 inches wide, that would extend further past the end of the gutter. That's just an option. Here's where the quarter inch lines go into the water supply. These are standard fittings. This is on a gravity water system, which is plenty good. If you use a pressure system, you might want to use a pressure reducer or just open the valve up on the faucet a little bit so that if you get a if something comes apart you won't just have water spraying everywhere it'll be a little slower I've had to wrap tin foil around this part of the aquarium float otherwise it's it's opaque plastic the sun goes through there grows algae eventually clogs up the valve so that's something that needs to be done on all these rain gutter systems got the trays set in there these are obviously from the old system they're already growing you can fit 17 trays across this rain gutter green system you can see the gap right in there that's where my float is in between those two trays half inch gap between all of them leave a gap or you will get some serious rot you have to get some air flowing between these pieces of wood if they're right up against each other they'll stay wet and they'll just rot really fast even though they're cedar they got enough of a battle with the soil on the inside keeping the inside wet you keep the outside wet also and it won't last too long starting out with these cedar fence boards six feet long 72 inches long by five and a half inches wide i picked through the pile a uh, big box store doesn't care and Got some, you know, not too many knots, decent straight grain, and not out of the heart of the tree. Maybe you can see the grain a little bit here. Um, this is not too complicated. You just don't want any center of the tree rings because those will warp excessively. Obviously, the more heartwood, which is red, the better off you're gonna be. I let these dry for a month to see whether they'd warp. Very few of them did. So I cut 40 inch pieces out of the 72 inch, one out of each one. Then I cut 20 inch pieces out of the remaining 32. And then out of that, I cut some seven inch pieces. These are the end caps. These 20 inch pieces are gonna end up being the bottom. Two times 20 is 40. Here's two of them. 40 inches seems to be the maximum that the capillary action will draw the water. I drew that circle using a cup from the kitchen that's a bigger diameter, quarter inch bigger diameter than the net cup. This is a net cup. It's a standard hydroponic growing system part. I'll put a link in the description. Then I routed the two pieces. That's to allow the net cup to sit down lower into the water than it would be with the full three quarter inch thickness of the board. And now I'm gonna nail them together. I shot these together using this inch and a half pinner. Any inch and a half nailer would work well. You can rent these too. They have cordless battery models. This is an air compressor model, whatever. Used a two and three quarter inch hole saw to bore a hole, came at it from the bottom. Just centered it on the joint, put the net cup in there, putting four screws in the end. Tie it all together, 
nails are not going to hold that end on there good enough. It's going to want to spread. I'm going to put some zip ties around the middle of the box to keep the sides from spreading from the bottom. Here's my rain gutter greens greenhouse. I got four pieces of 20 foot rebar bent around a truck tire, stuck them in the ground, put a 20 foot wide piece of plastic over it, put con concrete blocks to hold the plastic down. In summer the plastic comes off and I put shade cloth over those same rebar hoops. Here's how I bend rebar. I got this uh, truck tire for free. You could use a smaller diameter truck tire. This one's probably about, let's say, 36, 40 inches in diameter. Tie a nice strong rope around it, fairly tight. Stick the rebar through the rope. I turn the flats of the rebar parallel with the surface of the tire, if that makes any sense. When I flip it up, so I, I flip the tire up and just roll the tire along the length of the rebar. Here's the after photo. This other piece of rebar is just to hold the tire up while I take the video. And then take it off the tire, just rustle around with it until you get it close. Stick it in the holes in the ground, wrestle around with it some more. I've started putting the potting soil in this one. You have to really pack the potting soil in tight into that net cup to make sure the water, the capillary action works well to suck the water up into the bed. I've tried a number of different potting soils and miracle Grow has worked the best. Uh, it, it just moves the water better and it grows the plants well. I've tried some organic potting soils that just didn't work. They had too much uh, wood and bark in them. In the summer I have to space them out a little more because the greens grow a little more aggressively and overlap each other. In the winter, things are growing a little more slow. And that's why I'm adding these in here today. I've got it planted. One of the big bag of potting mix, it says 50 quarts, whatever, two cubic feet. It does about three of these trays. You can see these zip ties. I ran out. I'm going to have to get some more. This has been a winter. This rain gutter growth system, raised bed um, with these hoops covering it. It, uh, for the first time ever, we got greens throughout the summer. And of course, it gets colder here in the winter, maybe it gets down to 20 at times. So there's limits to what you can do with this kind of funky greenhouse. But for this climate, it's, it's working fine. And uh, keeps us in nice uh, salads year round.